On Saturday, the 8th of October, it's the start of a Rugby World Cup. As of yesterday, the Black Ferns announced their contracted player list, a number of 29 to prepare and get ready. Taylor Johnson from Sky Sport is our expert commentator and presenter. Taylor, thanks for joining us. You're probably across this group of players better than anybody in New Zealand when you talk about you've commentated so many games, worked on so many um, parts uh, in and around the game for the women in New Zealand. You think about this group that was announced now, and there's five training hubs, all of a sudden professional opportunities to train. Before we talk about maybe their performances last year and where they're going to, how significant is this in terms of a step forward, the next step forward for the game in New Zealand? Oh, it's huge. You know, a couple of years ago, they announced the first time that they were going to start contracting Black Ferns. And then from there, it's just built with the Farah Palmer Cup with new teams joining in, like the Hawks Bay rejoining. And then um, the Black Ferns obviously going on their tour last year, making that happen under COVID uh, times, which was a, a feat in itself, really, with a lot of other teams not not being able to go anywhere. So at least they got over there. But look, this seems really exciting. Um, another thing that hasn't really been talked about is that their pay has actually increased. So not only is, is there a contracted playing group, but they've got... Um, um, you know, higher pay, but also um, incentives to add on to that pay as well. So top ups, um, as you might call it. But this team is really exciting. There's a lot of young talent in here. Um, two people who picked up contracts who I've been a big fan of since I saw them debut in the Farah Palmer Cup while still at school is um, Liana Mikaelitu and Maya Kawana Kalani Roo. So uh, Mikaelitu, you probably heard that last name being an Islanders fan, is um, Marino Mikaelitu's little sister. And man, she turned heads when she debuted uh, for the Hawks Bay Tui a few years ago, still at high school, was just collecting players with her as she dove over the line, moved up to Auckland to study and, um, you know, is only 19 years old and has a contract um, with the Black Ferns and made her debut last year. She was awesome. And you also got Maya Kawana Kalani Roos, who was the head girl of Tamaki College, also made her debut. As, I think she was year 11 or year 12 when she made her debut for the Auckland Storm. Now she's got a contract too. So there's a whole lot of youth in the side um, in that forward pack, which is really exciting. Still a lot of um, players who've been around for a while, and a couple of these contracts have actually been rollover contracts yep. from two years um, previously as well, which is something to note. But interestingly, you know, they've only named 29 players. Obviously, we've still got the sevens woman to come in. Um, so I think there's going to be um, a big emphasis put on Super Rugby Opiki and to see who is in form. Um, you look at that squad, there's only one hooker. Um, there's more wingers than first fives and things like that. So there's definitely spots to play for, that's for sure. Yeah, they talked about the fact that there's a number of contracts that are going to be up for grabs, you know, and... and... Like you say, there's a number of Sevens players who have got Commonwealth Games on their radar as well, the Super Rugby Alpiki. And, and that's challenging at the moment as well because we don't know a start date for that. But all, all of this, this is not just about this contracted players list as it is expanding and getting bigger. This is not a short-term thing, right? This is a long-term thing. This is for the future of the game. This is, doesn't end after 2022. It carries on. It continues. So this is the start of... If, I would say in the professional era. I mean, you're, you're talking about the genuine start where players can. And, and, and look, it's, it's not anywhere near yet the level that the men are earning, but is the next step. And so now there's a lot of expectations that probably change. All of a sudden, goals and opportunities change as well. Um, and there's an element of pressure in and around that. And do you think in some ways there'll, be, there'll still be um, an adjustment period in terms of, okay, this is what a full-time professional looks like. Um, you know, you've been asked to train significantly and prepare yourself as a professional athlete, but without the resource, without the support, these five hubs that they've got across the country, you know, th this is significant in terms of helping these players prepare. But if I was to say to you, the 8th of October is not that far away. Last year, there's no doubt that there were a number of things on the end-of-year tour that were clearly evident where, where we were significantly behind both England and France. Can we, in the next six months, get ourselves to a point on the back of Super Rugby Alpiki, on the back of hopefully some domestic test matches at home or some test matches overseas, prepare ourselves to the point where we've got such a strong legacy. We know how great we have been at the biggest stage. Can this group plus some additions of some of the Sevens players, can they come together and get themselves in a position to become world champions again? 
Yeah, this next six months is really going to be telling, isn't it? Um, you're right, it's a transition period because these contracts aren't like the ones before. You know, the women were still working jobs, but now they've increased it that much that, you know, the likes of um, Eloise Blackwell, Blackwell, who was a che teacher, can now just focus on playing rugby. You've got, you know, um, Chelsea Alley, who also, um, or Chelsea Semple, I should say okay. now, who's married, Chelsea right. Semple, um, who has, uh, you know, can just focus on being a black friend. So that is going to be a transition period for everyone. Um, they're not used to actually being full-time athletes, and it's really good that they've got the PD um, windows in there as well. But, you know, there were actually some players who turned it down, and there needs to be questions asked, you know, why did they turn it down? Is it is it still not enough money for them to actually focus? You know, when you compare um, them to the likes of England and France, who are on good salaries and who can afford to give up their jobs, you know, we still have people say no to this this opportunity and for us um that's something we really need to look at and the other question is are they saying no because of the pay or is it um no because of other factors um you know i, I noted that they're missing one uh they've only got one hooker um they're missing um te kura nata aringa mata who obviously came out and said that um she really struggled with her mental health because of what was happening in the camp and we do need to still remember that that's an ongoing investigation and a lot of people raise their eyebrows um that the contracts were handed out when the coach is still under investigation things like that so there's a whole lot of things at play here um the question is can the girls do it i think they can um you know, they're a really big bunch of resilient ladies in there. I've, there's women in here who have come back from having children, um, someone who's had three um, ACL reconstructions. You know, I look at people like Ariana Baylor who have worked her, her butt off to get back into this position, same as Rohe Dumont and things like that. So they are a resilient bunch, but you're right, the likes of England and France have had so much resources poured into them prior to this year. We've almost, we've left it too late, to be fair. Um, we've invested so much in the sevens and that's paid dividends, but we haven't equally invested in the 15s game. So had we had invested in the 15s the same time we invested in the sevens, I think the results at last year's end of year tour would have been so much different. Yeah, and, and it was clearly evident that we were underdone on the back of not played enough rugby, not enough international competition as the opposition got stronger and moved away. We got to a point where it was almost like they were playing at a different speed. Surely now, though, this is the opportunity, and we've seen they've already had training camps in the off-season. Um, you talk about some of that uncertainty in and around uh, the last tour, and there was a review processes going on. Uh, my understanding is they've already made some adjustment and changes to some of the way they do things, some of the process they are doing, but there's an, an external review that will need to go about. But I don't see any changes happening there. I understand there's been a bit of support come out for the coach as well from players. So it's a matter of New Zealand rugby will go about doing that, but that can't be that can't be a distraction right now, is it? Is the fact that these women who have been given this opportunity who are fighting and scrapping like men do, preparing for their rugby World Cup, they want to make that squad right. They want to be part of that team. They want the chance that, well, to play a rugby World Cup at home here in New Zealand, which is going to be really challenging. The first area we looked at last year was it just it appeared as though, given the lack of rugby. Uh, the conditioning and our ability to keep up with the, the pace of the game was a challenge. Does this, does what they've done right now and over the summer and the work they've done, does that start to alleviate some of those concerns? If, if by maybe that test match, those test matches in the middle of the year, every player will have had that opportunity to get themselves in the best physical condition they're going to need across a tournament? Yeah, I think the biggest issue with the interview tour last year was because they didn't play any test matches yeah. the year before, we didn't have anyone to compare ourselves with. And, you know, I commentated the Farah Palmer Cup all last year and I kept thinking, man, the skill level is amazing. And then when I saw them play against, you know, the yeah. Black, uh, against England and France, it was like, oh, man, I, I was wrong. You know, like these women are just, uh, they were incredible. Um, and I think, yeah, the issue was is, they weren't playing at a high enough level. And I think the answer to that is Super Rugby Opiki. Um, yes, it's it's condensed, it's small, but it's still, you know, that next step up, it's it's the best of the best from our provincial rugby. And that's as close as we're going to get to test match level. So I think the preparations they've done by bringing, you know, the best players that we have across the country into that next level um, is going to make a difference. Because, you know, for years, you, you only went from the Farah Palmer Cup straight into international level. And, yeah. you know, with... Um, the men's game, you've got Super Rugby, um, and that really filters out, you know, the 
the um, the athletes uh, from the others. You know, you look at the Fire Palmer Cup. You've got um, you've got schoolgirls. You've got um, you know uh, mums who are just coming back. You've got people who are in their forties to people who are fifteen years old, um, and it's a huge range. But now this is where you know the the high performance kicks in. Yeah. Um, and as much as they like to say that they are high performance programs, they're just not quite up to the level that Super Rugby OPIC is. Um, so the more time we can spend in those camps and together, um, the better it's going to be. So, look, it's the best that, that the Black Ferns can do. There's nothing more that the squad can do to prepare themselves other than to play in this OPIC and have these these camps and play against each other because iron sharpens iron. When you're with the best, you're going to you're gonna perform um, to the best. So, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that it's taken this long yeah. to get, you know, OPIC running um, and that they didn't play test matches in 2020. Um, but I think now they just have to really focus on what they can control and that's playing against each other and, and sharpening each other. You talk about there's a few contracts we know up for grabs. Are there any surprises for you that aren't in this team? And there's a player like a Charmaine Smith who understands back playing again, which is great. She's been cleared to play and she's been in the Black Ferns before. Um, she's a player who I'm sure can have an impact at, at Super Rugby Olpiki. And Are there players that you're looking at going, you know what, I would be surprised they don't play their way, their way into the frame very, very quickly through Super Rugby Olpiki. Yeah, there's one player in particular that always screams out to me is uh, Joanna jo Nanwu from the Wellington Pride. She is head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to the Fire Palmer Cup. And it's a huge, uh, she's a huge omission from that squad. Uh, she covers both Locke and Lucy. Um, she's an incredible athlete and all her peers will say the same thing. Another big omission is Karis Dellinger. Um, you know, we've got multiple women who were um, nominees for the um, Fiel for Amosili medal who aren't in the squad um, and were voted by their peers as being the best. Um, so that, that's an interesting point there. Um, someone, I, you know, you did mention Charmaine Smith coming back and, and that's probably an area that we did struggle with uh, at the end of your tour was the type five. Um, but someone who I'm really hoping to see back is Toka Natua. So she um, has taking a year off because she's had a baby and I really hope to see her back. I mean, um, it's hard to forget her three tries scored at a Rugby World Cup final yep. um, from a from a front rower that's unheard of um, in both the men's and women's game. So I'd really love to see her back and I guess the delay um, in the Rugby World Cup has meant that she does have time to come back. Um, so I really hope to see someone like that um, in the squad again. Um, and yeah, it would be great to see Charmaine Smith back as well because we just, I think we need to strengthen that type five area. Um, you know, we don't really have, we've only got one hooker in there yeah. and this is the first time she's had a Black Ferns contract. Um, Grace Hope Upper Barrett was outstanding for the Waikato and I'm not being biased because yeah. she's from the mighty Waitomo. Um, but man, she was outstanding and, and that's another big um, omission from the squad. So yeah, I'd like to see some players kind of... Um, put their hands up to come back like Toka. Um, but yeah, we, we can only see. But yeah, I'm really devastated for people like Jonah um, Nanwu and uh, Kara Stellinger who were just head and shoulders above the rest in that Farah Palmer Cup. We, we have to be clear here. This doesn't close the door, right? This doesn't close the door on their opportunities going forward. This is more the fact that players have identified the fact that they feel as though they want to commit to right now. I'm sure um, those players you've talked about will understand that because... It, I mean, this is World Cup year. You can play your way into it. And that's what Super Rugby Old Picky is about, right? It's presenting the opportunity over the course of four weeks for you to go out in a month-long pressure environment to go out and perform. And then particularly in, in sense of a final, people say, well, there's only four teams, but there's a different pressure that comes with that, the ability to perform under that sort of pressure. So you, given, given what you know and what you've seen, and you're saying you hope, are you confident, confident that come... This Rugby World Cup, I say, it kicks off on the 8th of October, that one, we have the talent. You've talked about the skill level you saw over that. But we can quickly pull that together, get enough of the cohesion that by the end of that tournament, we are well and truly a player and a contender. I think two words stick out for me there, talent and cohesion. No doubt that we've got the talent. It's the cohesion that's the biggest issue because they haven't spent time playing with each other. Um, you know, as I said, the Farah Palmer Cup, there's 11 different teams. Um, and now that they're only going to be playing in four teams, you, you're going to start building those connections. And it's not until they actually come together as the Black Ferns camp and start building on those connections will we know. So I've got all the confidence in the world that we've got the talent, um, but we need to get 
I guess the um, the system right in the Black Ferns, you know, as you said, that's still um, you know a work in progress, and they're going to make changes. But yeah, it's it's the connections both on and off the field that are really going to make the difference here. Lastly, I can't I can't leave this chat, this pod here, this podcast, without asking you because you've got dual roles. You're working with Moana Pacifica right now, and you've been stuck in your own little room down in Queenstown. Could there be a could there be a worse place in the world to be stuck in your room? <laughs> and you told you told us before we came on here is that you've got no you've got windows with a view, but obviously you can't open the windows. You haven't had fresh air. Are you? Do you get the sense you there's freedom coming for you soon? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Well, these new government restrictions, we hopefully should be out um, in a couple of days. But yeah, it's, um, I'm actually overlooking the um, remarkables now because I'm talking to you, and it's really hard when it's been beautiful weather down here, but I can't go outside and breathe the fresh air but no it's uh i've been in worse places that's for sure yeah well you might get out just in time to watch the highlanders get beaten by the chiefs that's all i'm <laughs> going to say that's how i'll finish off the pod taylor hey thanks for talking to you we're going to talk to you through the year if, if you're available because we know how big a year this is for the game in new zealand and as well across the globe rugby world cup that's in october thanks taylor look after yourself take care stay safe <laughs> thanks jeff